Welcome back to another Behavior Beast. Uh, this one's going to be kind of an introduction to a couple of things that affect how reinforcement and punishment happen. We go into all this stuff in greater detail uh, in other videos. So, but, but this is kind of your first shot at it. So the first thing that you need to know is that reinforcement and punishment, they work, right? But there's more than two, there's, I mean, we talked about four kinds. We talked about positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, negative punishment. But we also need to understand that each one of those can be divided into two others, right? We've got uh, conditioned punishers and conditioned reinforcers and unconditional reinforcers and unconditional punishers, often called unconditioned, but either way. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Um, the point is, is that we need to understand that there's things that affect how reinforcement functions and punishment functions. And one of those things is really simple. So, so let me back up a little bit and talk about unconditional reinforcers. So an unconditional reinforcer is something that's just a natural reinforcer, right? He has no pairing or no, uh, uh, no sort of modification process to make it a reinforcer. So food, sex, water, warmth, that sort of stuff. Some of your really basic things that keep you as an organism alive. Those are the things that are probably uh, considered unconditional reinforcers. I say probably because there's a little bit of argument in the field about what is an unconditional reinforcer and what isn't. Um, but in general, um, it's that food, sex, water, warmth stuff. We can do a billion jokes about that stuff, but that's enough for now, all right? So the point being um, that we can work with those unconditional reinforcers. And I like the food one, all right? So let's focus on the food one because if we're focusing on food, then what we need to know is that an unconditional reinforcer is only the food as an unconditional reinforcer is only works if the motivating operations are established properly. Well, what does that mean? That means that food is a motivator to an organism that hasn't eaten food in a while. If I've consumed all the food in my pockets and I'm kind of full, then it's probably not likely that I will work for food right now because I've satiated, right? But if you deprive me of food, if you take food away or keep me in a to a hungry organism, hungry, right? So what's hunger? Hunger is time since last meal. So if we have an organism that hasn't eaten food in a while, guess what? Food's gonna be reinforcing. That's a motivating operation. If the organism is satiated on food, then food's not gonna be a valuable reinforcer. So if we wanna use reinforcers and punishers, we better make sure that they're valuable. We better make sure that we've established the appropriate motivating operations to change the value of these stimuli, to make sure that they do what they're supposed to do, to have an effect on the world, right? Um, so even with the unconditional ones, that there's things that make them happen and not and effective and not effective. That's one of the things that people get so frustrated with about this field is they go, well, I gave the kid candy and it just wasn't reinforcing. Well, maybe the kid was full, right? So you never know, there's all sorts of things. So some of the other stuff I wanna to talk to you about is um, the difference between unconditioned and conditioned reinforcers or unconditioned and conditioned punishers. A conditioned punisher, a conditioned reinforcer, it's just something that's been paired with another reinforcer. That's really all it is, or a punisher. So, and it's been paired with a, when the pairing needs to happen with a, a particular stimulus and the unconditioned reinforcer or the unconditioned punisher. So folks, my point is, is that here's the first interaction between classical conditioning and operant conditioning, right? This is where stuff starts to get really convoluted and some people go, well, behavior's super simple. Yeah, buy our shirt and you'll understand that it's not. The point is, is that operant conditioning and classical conditioning start to interact here. Here's where we start to build those new uh, reinforcers. Well, how do we build new reinforcers? Repeated pairings, right? Uh, so we could get really naughty here. All sorts of stuff predicts sex and becomes reinforcing because it's been paired with sex, right? Uh, lingerie, uh, for example. Uh, maybe a certain song or whatever, you know, woo -hoo. Uh, I mean, just thinking of a song now, I'm like getting all excited. Mm -hmm. No, maybe not. But anyway, um, so. <laughs> or it could be a Punisher if I think of that song. Oh, ex-wives, <laughs> crazy. Um, so, so folks, what I'm getting at is really simple. Punishers and reinforcers are either unconditioned or conditioned. We develop, we make them conditioned by pairing a stimulus repeatedly with an unconditioned stimulus, with an unconditioned reinforcer or an unconditioned punisher, right? So that way we have the world around us as, as all sorts of things that may be reinforcing. It may be reinforcing for me to walk among the rocks. Uh, why? I don't know. We could come up with all sorts of reasons, but we'd have to find out, right? We have to find out if something's a reinforcer by seeing if it changes behavior, if it's a punisher by reducing behavior. What this allows us to do is develop a wide, wide range of, uh, of stimuli that are reinforcing and punishing. It also leads to some of the complexity of behavior and some of the individual differences that we're going to talk about in another video, right? Um, so just remember that the same stimulus is not necessarily a reinforcer and a punisher for everyone. The ones that are the same 
are the unconditioned ones, right? So the other stuff on unconditioned punishers, I never really got into it, is pretty much anything that harms the organism or, uh, and interestingly enough, extreme whatevers can be punishing. So I can take an extreme odor, an extreme sound, an extreme sight, and all of that stuff can be punishing, right? That's done through, uh, that's, that's your, your, your uh, uh, unconditioned uh, punishers, uh, and then we compare other things with those that predict those, and those in turn become punishing. Uh, so we can use a wide range of stimuli for punishment. We can use a wide range of stimuli for reinforcement. That's what we've got. Those are the tools that start us to allow us to build behavior, build voluntary responses using, classic, uh, using um, selection by consequences. That is the way our, our behavior works. That's, that's the core pieces of operant behavior, of voluntary responses. I think that's enough for now. I'm probably gonna get a little wet if I do anything else. So, I'll see you later. And on a day like today, being wet would be highly punishing. Take care, have a good one.